Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. I have this lovely golden leaf tutorial here for you today. I'm using my favorite colors, which is going to be some blues that kind of lean on the turquoise side and gold leaf for the leaves. This produces this gorgeous painting. And if you don't have gold leaf, you can certainly go about doing this in a different way. And I will share that with you at the end of the video. So don't uh, miss out on those tips and alternative methods. Showing you what I started off doing here, I traced my leaf design on a piece of paper. I'm using 9 by 12 Arches watercolor pull press. And I'm going to wet the paper really well in order to do the background. I'm using this reference photo as inspiration to do this project. Uh, the blues that I used, I've only used a couple of blues. Uh, the first one that's really light on the bottom where there's more light coming through is Perusian blue and the top part is more indigo. And I'm sorry, I did use marine blue too to get that little bit of uh, an aqua color. I do love the plays of aqua and orange together. They just look so good together. And um, I did want to drop in some of that little bit of a greenish hue in the background. So I am painting in a circular way, as you can see. There are a lot of bokeh lights or bouquet lights, however you want to say it, in this reference photo. And I'm painting circular sh shapes like that to mimic the background. I'm going to further bring out those lights with some sponge daubers. You can also use stencils once your painting has dried to lift up paint uh, for the circles. I'm trying to leave the bottom part uh, a lot lighter and the top part is darker. So while my paper's still wet, I'm getting as many of the round shapes in as I can. This will lift paint and further bring more light to the bottom of this painting as well. Now you'll notice that as the paper is drying, the parts that I have lifted off are drying differently than the rest of the paper and producing these hard edges. Those were, are going to be fixed in the next step once we let our paper completely dry. The paper is going to be delicate when it's wet and you don't want to mess too much with a soaking wet piece of paper and twisting your dauber and it will end up marring the paper. You'll end up overworking it. So once I'm happy with the amount of light effects that I have, and I have a good uh, contrast between the lights and the darks, I'm just going to go ahead and let the painting dry completely. Now that my painting is completely dry, I am going to go over some of those areas where there are hard edges and I kind of lost that circular shape. Uh, I want to define those ones that are a little jaggedy. I don't have to go over all of them. I'm just going over the ones that I'm not happy with. Now 
Okay, so I'm just going to dry that up a little bit. It really shouldn't be that wet. I just want to make sure that it's completely dry before we put the branches in. So for the branches, I'm using a calligraphy brush and I'm using some sepia mixed with lunar black, but it's mostly sepia. And I'm trying to hold up my brush higher towards the middle and top of my brush in order to force myself to kind of be uh, loose with these strokes. They tend to be more realistic when you're not trying to force a straight line or just kind of let things happen naturally. <laughs> So I am following my pencil marks as guidelines, so where I'm putting all these branches. That one turned out pretty thick and I was like, ugh, but you know what? If you go back and try to fix it, it's just not going to look right. So I just left that one alone. So once I'm done with all the branches, now I have to apply the gilding glue on the leaves where I'm going to put the gold leaf. Some of the leaves, I kind of wanted them to be imperfect and kind of jaggedy and missing some areas like in the reference photo, how some are like disintegrating leaves, like it's they're getting old on the tree type of thing. I think those are so beautiful. So I just kind of played around and made some leaf shapes. And one tip with this glue is that it really does have to give it a good hour to dry. If there's any areas that have not dried completely and are thick and goopy, then when you go to lay the gold leaf down, it will not work out properly and it kind of leaves a very dull impression and it's it's really just not pretty so grab yourself a cup of tea or whatever walk away and uh, let let it dry completely you could i've even let this adhesive on the paper i've left it alone for weeks at a time because i was busy and when i came back it, it always remains tacky for the gold leaf to be applied and i had no problems with waiting for so long so just to let you know that too if you can't get to it the same day it's not a big deal i actually did this at night and came back to it the next day to apply the gold leaf And I really find this gilding adhesive really not too bad on your paintbrushes. Obviously, I didn't use my like super cream of the crop top brushes, but it is still a pretty good brush that I'm using there. It's a very nice detail brush. And as long as I rinsed it out right away, I also have some, a, a bar of soap that's meant for paints that, you know, I rubbed it on there and smoothed it into the bristles and rinsed it out really well. And it, held up fine it's completely fine after i cleaned it out so once you're done with that you're going to let that dry like i told you for at least an hour and then you're going to lay down uh, these sheets of gold leaf they're extremely thin and so i'm just kind of patting it down and with a brush the leftover gold leaf i can spread it around and rotate it onto more of the leaves until I've pretty much used up one single sheet. And when I only just have a few flakes left, that's when I'm gonna grab another sheet. So this stuff will really last you a long, long time. It's also a fun thing to have uh, in your painting arsenal. 
it's a lot of fun. It's the, the glitter season for Christmas is coming up and I plan to use it a lot more. <laughs> I think it was like 10 bucks for, I don't know how many sheets I got there, but boy, it was quite a few sheets, maybe a hundred sheets. I, I definitely won't need to buy any more of this stuff for like a couple of years, I imagine. So see how many leaves I got done with just one sheet? I was pretty good. I'm going to lay down my other sheet and continue on doing these golden leaves. and laying down the rest of it, trying to hit all the spots. <laughs> Don't have too many left here. Um, I do like to use a bristle brush that is a little stiff. And uh, I don't know what brush this is to tell you the truth. I bought this like ages ago, but it's, it's quite, it's a lot stiffer than my other brushes and it really works out well to pat down on the gold leaf and clean the edges. So there you go, two sheets worth, and it made this really beautiful pattern. Okay, so cleaned up all the leftovers I put in a little can that I could reuse. And what do you guys think? Especially I like that lacy one at the very bottom. I thought that one turned out cool. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys some alternatives, and I also want to talk about how you could alter the gold leaf. So in this example, these two leaves and these two leaves, they were touching one another. I have a very fine point dotting tool here that it, it almost acts like a scraper. And you can actually scrape off some of this gold leaf if you need to alter uh, the design at all and i can even scrape in the veins of the leaf if i want to now by scraping off this gold leaf i could then go back in with a script liner brush and put in more details if I wanted to. I kind of like that it's just this solid gold, but I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, I definitely noticed a difference that I scraped off the gold leaf and made these two separate leaves. I didn't like the that they were touching, but that's something you could do. Now, if you wanted to just paint the leaves themselves, then during your very first step, you would take some masking fluid and you could mask out all your leaves okay so once you mask out all your leaves then you would do your background you would put in your branches then you would remove the masking fluid and you can go ahead and use some beautiful you know oranges and golden colors and you could you know follow along with that reference photo and do the leaves more realistic that way instead of this more abstract fancy sort of thing going on now if you don't have gold leaf but you want to do glittery leaves like this uh, all their alternatives are acrylic gold pens and some inks you could get some Windsor and Newton has beautiful gold ink and you could just paint paint that on there and it would look quite close to the gold leaf as well. 
without having to do the adhesive step. So those are a couple tips for you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.